Josie's on a vacation far away. Come around and talk it over. So many things that I want to say. You know I like my girls a little bit older. I just want to use your love tonight. I don't want to lose your love tonight. I ain't got many friends left to talk to. Nowhere to run when I'm in trouble. You know I'd do anything for you. Stay the night, but keep it undercover. <laughs> I just want to use your love tonight. I should not have looked up the lyrics. You no, know I you like would... my girls a little bit older. Oh! <laughs> this is my Sharona all over again. <laughs> Talk karaoke about karaoke with uh, were we gonna do karaoke with pandas? We were. We gotta bring that up with them later. All right. Uh, I don't know how you do online karaoke, but we'll find a way. Because well, I don't want to lose your love. <laughs> well, I, I started with "Welcome to," and then you just that yeah, was perfect. It's perfect tonight. Ba-dum-dum. You done? Am I auto tuned myself? I don't know. <laughs> I think I'm done now. I think Got I'm any more done in there? now. I think we're both done. Doesn't seem to be any. This is bonus experience. Introductions, comma bullshit, comma etc. <laughs> a podcast with a deeper look at the play experience and the finer details of running and writing games. We are queer women speaking with authority about games. Exclamation point. Mm. Yes, we swear. Period. I'm I'm mad mad about it. it. We probably should actually do the introductions instead of me just reading the placeholder text on the outline. Uh, I liked the placeholder text in the outline a lot. I I, I was like, I was trying really hard to keep a straight face and just yes and that. Uh, Yeah, I'm Monica. I'm Monica. Hi. Who are you? I'm Ray. What's going on? I don't know. Normally we do that whole like industry professional thing. Right. I didn't feel like doing it. Okay. <laughs> no. So yeah. Sometimes it'd be like that. I got you. I I have been industry professionaling really hard for days. Uh, yeah. And I'm 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 trying for a bigger industry professional thing, and I'm tired, and I don't feel like bragging about today, it. Today, right today you're just Monica. Yeah. I'm just Monica. Just Monica. One name. Just Monica. Like Cher and or Madonna. Oh, that's a Doki Doki Literature Club Just Monica. reference, aren't you? Yeah. Okay. Uh, this is my podcast. This is our podcast. This is our podcast. I haven't been recording it in quite some time. I kind of missed it. Yeah, I kind of missed it too. I missed, I missed it's been you. a minute. I missed, I missed you. I missed you. Mm. And I missed yeah. our audience. And I missed yeah. doing this. Yeah, we've but, been we've been under a rock for a little while, though. Of course, for you guys, we continually released some content. Um, <laughs> the bare minimum I, I, of content. Bare, listen, we <laughs> we're now off our regular schedule, so I'm got to change my calendar. <laughs> but, we we had a lot of things in production. We have a couple of cool things coming out with our names on them, and yeah. I am a real dummy when it comes to what's under NDA and what isn't. So I haven't been talking about it at all, just to cover my bases. <laughs> <laughs> So this new series is our 101 or beginner set of topics. Um, we're going to dial back on the super technical aspects of the show and try to help out some newbies. Um, and if you're not new, this will probably not be helpful to you. <laughs> uh, so you can just go ahead and skip the next three episodes. Um, and if you like want to keep giving us listens, I, I recommend you go back and listen to your favorite episode three times instead. Yeah, just cue one up. Keep it on repeat. What's your favorite episode? Which one would you listen to three times over? Mine? What, what, one, what one would I listen to three times? Um, I think I would listen to Diegesis. Was oh, for when we play for 10. Yeah, That's Diegesis, a good one. Diegesis was a really good one. It was a really yeah. good one. Um, I'm trying to think of... We've done... We've d- produced a lot of content, Ray. <laughs> We're content I'm really, creators. I'm kind of proud of us. <laughs> <laughs> Not quite influencers yet. Just creators. Uh, Tone, Scope, and Scale is really good. Yeah, I... You know what? Tone, Scope, and Scale would be mine. Tone, scope, and scale. 
We cover yeah. a lot of ground. But anyway, if you're new and you're wondering what the fuck a session zero is, we're going to talk about session zero. So stick around. Cool. We've we've right. mentioned it before. And now we're actually going to do like a like a deep dive and explain to you what it is and how to use it. Yep. So first of all, what's a session zero? What is that? All right. Well, we, we talked about this a little bit in the changing your character episode. Um, session zero is usually a preliminary session. Um, it typically includes character creation uh, where the GM and the players get together to make characters and build and or build the setting. Um, and then they agree on their expectations for the game. Um, our free episode of the Lady Blackbird AP has us kind of doing one of those. Yeah. Um, and we also snuck in a couple of scenes of play. And when I can manage to do that in a session zero, I'll kind of interchangeably call it the pilot episode because it's it's a trial. It's it's not really canonical. If it doesn't work out after the pilot, we'll recast you. It's fine. <laughs> Change yeah, it if you want to. Yeah, that's a, it's a, if you can work in, I, I definitely think the best kind of session zero is really sort of a session zero and a half. Um, yeah. Again, I will refer our listeners to go check out the free episode of Lady Blackbird, um, where we where we set expectations. We talk about things we want to see. We do a little build, bit of world building. Everybody picks their characters and who they want to play. Um, and then we play for about, what, like 20 minutes? Yeah. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, and we get everybody gets sort of a feel for their characters and the way they relate to each other, and sort of just sort of sets the stage for what's to come. Right, and then yeah. if you like that, like go become a Patreon and get the rest of it too, because we're having a blast with Lady Blackbird. Honestly. Oh yeah, it's, been, it's so um, much fun. We've gone some places with it. Um, <laughs> it's really starting to come together, though. I'm really excited. Um, anyway, uh, right. so okay, why have a session zero? Why not just jump right into the game? like and media res right good question there's some I, I have encountered some resistance to this but but not a lot usually um but the thing is that a lot of gaming groups have an unspoken social contract um which will be important if we do a one-on-one on safety which i think we should we should um, yeah yeah uh but even then that contract can be accidentally violated and leave people feeling bad and unsafe um also sometimes what the gm has in mind and what the players have in mind are totally different. Mm-hmm. And this has happened to me. <laughs> it's always happened to me so many times. Yeah. Um, session zero helps you get all of that out of the way right up front. And um, on top of managing theme and scope expectations, uh, having a session zero, it helps get everyone on the same page about like the actual concrete game content, like, you know, character and uh, party balance and that sort of thing. You don't want everyone to bring a spellcaster. Uh, you want to arrange that shit beforehand. Session zero. Um, and for some systems and settings, a session zero is basically required. Uh, such as if you're doing a fate game by the book and you want to have everyone collaborate on the setting and the game content from the very beginning. Um, and I think even Powered by the Apocalypse has uh, room for this too. Um, or not Powered by the Apocalypse. Yeah. I'm thinking uh, of Apocalypse, Apocalypse World specifically, specifically has, yes. a, has a first session like have everybody show up, decide what the fronts are kind of thing. Yes. Yeah. Well, since we got a little warmed up, um, why don't we pause for a quick second and go do the mid episode break? Ooh, an early break. Okay. An early break. We'll, we'll take an early break. We're, we're only 12 minutes in, which technically real? we're like, yeah, for real. Oh my God. I mean, we bullshitted for, for 20 minutes beforehand and that turned into bonus content. Bullshatted. Bullshatted. Bullshat. <laughs> um shat hmm. the shit <laughs> <laughs> unless you want to bump one of these questions up We're- we could split uh we could split one of the questions up maybe i don't know there's a lot got, of there's got, a lot of room we here four- we should just play Listen, in the we got, space we got two we got four questions we got two before and two after play in the space uh oh so uh the the let me just talk about the, the game i was in that i can remember very clearly i'll, I'll bullshit for a sec yeah. Uh, where um so we played in a mage heist game and the players wanted it to be Ocean's 11 with magic and the GM wanted it to be like a Guy Ritchie movie. Yeah. Yeah. So like we wanted to play like a lighthearted ish heist game uh like 
imagine like a Trinity Continuum leverage, just normal people heist game, but also we're mages, so we have superpowers. That's awesome. Um, and like, that's what the group wanted to play. But what the GM ran was like a mage game. So like there were magical horrors and like the stuff we took came with like a steep moral price and <laughs> like we had to deal with like other mage societies and eventually the game fizzled out partially because uh, everyone went into it going, oh, this is going to be a cool treasure hunting, steal the jewels, we have magic game. And what we got was sort of a horror story. Uh, and we obviously did not session zero. <laughs> Yeah. Um, yeah. Learn from our um, nightmares. Yeah. I mean, I, I actually really enjoyed playing that game, despite it not really being what we wanted. Kind of being to be. a tonal nightmare. Yeah. Well, we so like we were a pretty good group. It wasn't like once we realized that the GM had sort of not bought into what we were pitching because it was someone who actually agreed to run the game based on us being like, "Oh, we want to play a mage ice game." Oh, okay. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, once we sort of realized he had not picked up what we had put down, we bought into it as much as we could. Oh, okay. Um, though we had, like, built a team sort of based on a movie. <laughs> uh, like, I was specifically I was specifically playing an Obermost demolitions expert. That's an interesting subversion of the, like... Because I've, I've had to kind of pivot game like in mid in mid in mid game really to to meet player expectation like oh shit i i didn't realize this is what they wanted okay i i need to like like gradient into that i i have never heard of players doing that for the gm <laughs> well like i mean there was some friction because we came with a heist group like we sort of we sort of session zeroed like everybody kind of had this cool idea and then we sort of pitched it to the, to someone because henry didn't want to run he wanted to play um, oh, so this is Henry. Someone, yeah. He, well, no, Henry didn't run. Wasn't running the game. Henry oh, okay. was playing with me. Oh, okay. Well, a few times, Henry has played with me, um, and so we found a friend, like a mutual friend who we weren't like super close with, but like kind of enjoyed hanging out with, who was super down for the idea. We were like, "Oh, hey, so and so." Uh, we'll call him Tom because that's definitely not his name. It's definitely not his name. <laughs> uh, we were like, "Hey, Tom, you know, you, will you run this game for us?" Uh, and he did and then we we sort of kind of met him halfway but like i said we had already made characters that were like an ocean's 11 crew yeah like and then you had henry, to cram them into a different genre basically yeah henry like i i literally made a demolitions expert like <laughs> <laughs> forces matter prime i am here to make things explode um you know my my job is to put the charges on the safe and make them somehow go off silently you know yeah yeah uh and like Henry had made a Moros who was all about like theft through space and time, um, who ultimately committed some real big wisdom sin at the end when he killed a man by teleporting a speeding 18 wheeler through his cell phone. Oh, fuck. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Let's go to the break room. Let's go to the break room. I'll finish this beer in there. Gonna drop a mountain on my hunger because I got the munchies. All right, go, go get some of that cereal. BXP and the mid-episode break room are brought to you by the Misdirected Mark Network. Become a BXP patron. Just $3 a month gets you access to our outline, mini episode of bonus content every month, and an actual play. Mini bonus content goes up twice a month. Wait, should we rewrite that? <laughs> uh, it's just still twice a month. I mean, just, we try to make it twice a month. It's just three dollars a month gets you access to our outline, two mini episodes of bonus content every month, and an actual play. And we have a Discord now. You can come hang out. Patrons get access to a special chat room and a cool display color. We have some stuff in the works with the MMP network. Um, I'm going to skip the part about our coffee. Uh, to, to bring some news instead. Oh. Uh, so um, our, the MMP folks have been talking about streaming. Um, and we are in the process of working out a streaming venture. Uh, so there will be a BXP related show on the MMP streaming thing. So we're, we're wor working on getting some shows together. Um, we're working on the logistics of uh, streaming or getting everybody together on a stream remotely. 
one of our industry friends and friend of the show, Danielle Lozon, has agreed to run games for us. Uh, she's really interested in running uh, games that do not get a lot of screen time, um, thanks to the popularity of D&D. Uh, so if you would like to see me and Ray play off and on in a game run by a tremendous industry professional, also a, a queer woman, um, you can look forward to, in the future, BXP Bicons coming to Twitch. <laughs> You're so proud of that fucking name. I'm so proud. I was of waiting for you pun. to drop it. <laughs> BXP Bicons. Bicon. Are we gonna get another yeah. logo made though? We sh- we are. We We're totally gonna get it. Fucking will. Once, we absolutely fucking will. Um, once we get really the the logistics of all that straightened out, because MMP is gonna bring on some other new shows. Um, the Twitch channel they have currently is Chris's personal one. <laughs> So we're going to migrate everything over onto uh, its own channel. Um, and then you can look forward to pretty regular programming from MMP. Isn't that fucking awesome? I'm pretty excited, honestly. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that's that's news. It's been also MMP forever since before. I like, it's been forever since I played. I mean, not, I mean, yeah. Lady Blackbird is honestly the first game I've played in in over a year. Dang. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. So what that's we really that? that's some really cool stuff. Oh, yeah. MMP also has a forum. <gasps> We're soft launching that forum. Yes. Well, I think it officially launched later today. It'll... By the time this episode goes out, it will be officially launched. Yes. So MMP, MMP now has a forum. I'll confirm with Rob <laughs> before this yeah, okay. comes up, just to make sure. <laughs> sure. MMP now has a forum. Um, it's probably linked on the website. Uh, I'm not 100 percent sure. It's a PHP BB. I went there. I started having like potent flashbacks. Oh, uh, I, I, me too. Me too. Me too. Um, classic. Like it, if there it, is a if it was like orange what? and white, I'd be like, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Uh, it's not. It's gray and black. Um, and uh, we have a BXP sub forum. Um, Margaret made an account. We're not sure how that happened. I don't know. Yeah, that wasn't me. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't me either, so... What a mystery. Yeah, I don't so know Margaret who did... taught her how to do that, how she got past right. the fucking CAPTCHA. <laughs> Margaret managed to enter a CAPTCHA correctly, um, and I think she took our um, podcast email to register with, so... Oh, uh, all right. I'll, uh, <sighs> yeah, I'll use mine then. All right. Well, we're we're both on there. Um, so if you have questions that you want to reach us there, as opposed to our email or anything else, you can. Um, you might hear from Margaret there. That's that's what we got. <laughs> <laughs> Margaret is trolling to forums, is what we have. <laughs> um, hey, if you like bonus experience, and we know you do, you'll love this misdirected Mark show. The misdirected Mark. Chris, Phil, and Bob go live every Tuesday evening at 8 p.m. Eastern to break down and get inside games, game mastering, playing games, and game design in an effort to entertain <laughs> and inform you. I like the way you said Tuesday evening. <laughs> <laughs> Listen. I know. It's, I know. It's late. It's been a long time since we've done this. Everything's going to be <laughs> fine. Have a bowl of Fruity Pebbles. Well, I like I them when they get all uh, mushy. I like when I mean, they, they they crackle like Rice Krispie Treats. You distill them into like a mushy, multicolor milk. And then you drink that sugary milk. <laughs> All right. Let's, let's quit being disgusting. And, uh... I'm going to take my bowl of cereal milk with me. All right, let's go. <laughs> and hello, especially to our generous patrons who have contributed to the $5 tier and higher, they, I get to say their names on my podcast, followed by a sincere thank you. So here we go. I'm going to mispronounce a whole bunch of names. Thank you to Jonathan Grash, Joe Ammon, Charles Lines, Sean Ivey, John S., Lawrence Hawkins, Henry Bangsberg, Will Hammerand, Terry Robinson, Zach Norwig, Mipsalon, Craig Schmitty, Rob Abrazado, J.D. Tuttle, and Michael Phillips. You guys are cool. I, you know, I, I probably should have, like, written something down so that it would come out, like, a little bit better. But honestly, thank you so much. Now you've experienced the delightful pleasure of hearing your name in my voice. Did you ever try that Oreo that was cereal milk flavored? 
No. Uh, it was the mystery flavor. It was it was really bad. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds terrible. It was very very bad. I you know I I'm a I'm a sucker for new Oreo flavors. I I wish they would do like little sample packs so I didn't have to commit to the whole fucking bag. But I remember we got the mystery Oreos and we all tried like one and then just threw the whole thing away. <laughs> it was so oh, bad. No. Oh no. <laughs> and you were supposed to it was part of like a promotion where you're supposed to like enter the contest by guessing what the flavor is and I was like railing on Twitter about how fucking nasty they were. <laughs> and then I like hashtag mystery flavor. <laughs> Hey, Monica. Yeah. What goes into a successful session zero? Well, character creation for sure. Yeah. I think. Uh, yeah. Uh, including what you're going to allow and what you're not. So like, this is a really great time to pin down your house rules. Um, I've had a whole bunch of arguments in the last four, 45 days. Uh, <laughs> since we last talked um, about, you know, uh, like people being like, oh, this class is broken. So I'm going to do X, Y, Z in character thing to stop it. And I had to be like, ah, <laughs> no, you don't use so the like character if, solution for an out of character problem. Out of character problem. Yeah. I had that. I, I threw down um, with my miniature buddies about that. <laughs> um, and which, which ultimately ended in them asking me the question like, okay, so uh, how do exactly you decide um, what mechanics to create the experience you're looking for? And I was like, that is the fucking question, isn't it? Yeah. Pay me and maybe I'll talk That's about it. That's design work. <laughs> That's design work. Um, but anyway, so like if you have a, if you, there's, uh, the question was over the sharpshooter class from, from D&D, which apparently lets you shoot at an extremely long range with no penalty. And this can be a problem because you basically get to do an alpha damage strike with like no problem immediately jesus okay right uh and so people were like oh clearly the solution is to take away the archer's arrows and i'm like no you fucking turds the solution is to shorten the range the archer has God. <laughs> <laughs> okay. it was not actually my buddies who proposed that solution they presented it as being like this is dumb and i was like yes you're correct. absolutely stupid you're fine. <laughs> correct uh so like if you're setting up a session of D&D &D and you know that someone would like to play that idea or at least thinks the idea of a sharpshooter is cool and isn't particularly buying into that to, you know, like, win the game, uh, then you're just like, well, your range is only 100 squares, not 600. Fuck, 600. <laughs> God it's damn. 600 yards. Each one's a square, yards a square, right? Holy so, shit. Range of the board. Uh, so, like, that's where, during session zero is where you're like, the sharpshooter will only be able to shoot out to a range of a hundred. Yeah, know? yeah. Um, or uh, this or we're is only a game. we're only using adventure league uh, legal right. classes and races. Right, 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 right. Um, or like uh, since this is um uh, I don't want any magic, no magic classes or whatever. Yeah. Just take it on D and D because it's easy. Bards only. <laughs> Bards Final only. destination. <laughs> <laughs> no items. <laughs> I loved my Bards Only game. Can't take that from me. Um, I can't take that from you. Yeah, and on, and, and on top of like character creation and like home rules and allowances, um, this is also the time for everyone to talk about what they intend to play. If this is a system where overlap would be uh, burdensome or unwelcome, or if it's the sort of system where multiples of the same playbook aren't possible. Because um, you don't want to come to your game like, I want to play the monstrous <laughs> and your con GM is like, you can't. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry again. Sorry. This is also a great time to introduce safety rules, whatever safety rules you're going to use. Um, I have on the outline lines of veils. Um, like lines and veils are a thing that you go over. So that's like a, that's a really good, um, that's a really good tool to use in session zero stuff like the X card scene change. Um, one of those, like the check-in have you ever seen the check-in no i haven't seen the check-in uh it was something i saw at uh, qcc qcc had a whole bunch of like here's a whole bunch of safety tools just on every table wow okay cool uh, laminated too very impressed damn um, nice yeah yeah uh the check-in is basically like if things are getting intense the gm pauses the game and is just like check-in and then you like make a hand symbol for like i'm okay i'm good i'm not good 
please stop or whatever. And then yeah. everybody's just like, cool. Yes. No. Mm, mm, mm. Yeah. Uh, and then you check in with anybody who's having trouble. You either stop, take a break, whatever, and then pick back up. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, so lines and veils. Um, lines are things. I think we did this a little bit in Lady Blackbird. So we did. Yes. Uh, do that. Yeah. 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 Lines are things that you absolutely do not want to see. Um, for example, uh, let's say you are terrified of spiders. Hey. <laughs> there will be no spiders in this game. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, you, you'd be like, I'm definitely arachnophobic. I do not want to see any spiders. Don't even uh, mention spiders. Don't even mention spiders. There will be no spiders. Um, uh, like, one of my hard lines is no sexual assault. Yep. Not at all. Yep. No, nope. no violence to children. Yeah. That's a big one for me, too. Uh, yeah. Most those, like... No sexual assault, no violence to children, um, no harm to pet animals, mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. or like no deaths of pet animals. Like some people, so that that's variable. Some people are like, nope, I don't want any pet animals to even get hurt, and some people are like, nope, no, no pet animals will die. Yeah, um, yeah. Like those are lines, things we are striking out. They will not be appearing in this game whatsoever. Um, and then veils are things that you want to, that can exist, but are obscured. So like, you're not going to go into detail, but they might exist. Um, I think we talked about like the possibility of slavery being veiled in, uh, Lady Blackbird. Right. Right. Well, like we know it exists. It's a thing that happens. It's bad. Like we're not condoning it. It's bad, but we are not going to see anybody, uh, struggling with that. Right. And also, uh, it's important to note, too, that when you use safety tools like like lines and veils or X cards, that they don't have to be considered like the, the we, we can get into this if we decide to do another uh, episode purely on uh, safety. Yeah, we could, we could just do safety. Um, one, don't make sure that you aren't expecting anyone to explain themselves to you because the explanation is not important at all. If someone says, yeah, spiders are a line for me. I don't, I don't want to see or hear from spiders <laughs> that you don't say, what? well, why? You just go, okay, cool. Because they don't yep. owe you an explanation. Um, and at the right, same no. time, if you're someone who's considering your lines and veils, don't think about like, well, you know, it's not like I have any trauma or anything. If there's something that genuinely bothers you that's just petty, you can still have it in a veil. Like, I don't want to get you all riled up over like, I just don't want to have any political allegories in this game. I do this to get away. I don't want to have, you know, the orcs are really Republicans. <laughs> that's that's a line for me. <laughs> like, okay, that's great. Absolutely fine. So don't don't think of safety tools as as, you know intensive care for special victims. They can also be just for people like you know, I just want to relax. Do I one of my veil one of my veils is I don't want math problems in my puzzles in D and D. Like, all right, gotcha. <laughs> yeah. Uh, one of my lines is that I must always have bodily autonomy over my character. Yes. Right. Uh, See, like, it's, like yeah. and I mean, I mean, full on body bodily autonomy. You cannot change anything about my character's body without my permission. Right. So, like, I no cute tails or horns. Don't make me bigger or smaller, like, and especially uh, no, like, oops, you got pregnant. Like, don't fucking yeah, pull that. Yeah, none of that. Uh, no maiming. None of that without my express permission. Yep. Yep. Or, or like, because it's it's different if I'm like, oh, well, I'm playing a shapeshifter. That's then I'm that's that's under my control, right? But like, don't polymorph me into a frog without my permission. Yeah. 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 Anyway. Anyway, that's, well, that's like a thing that's not trauma. I've never been shapeshifted into a frog. It's just annoying. Yeah. <laughs> and also, you may even want to get this stuff out of the way before you as a GM even start planning your game. Uh, because as said before, you know, if you really want to have a spider ridden, ridden cave and an arachno mage as your first like major arc antagonist, and then it turns out your players is actually arachnophobic, like, you've got to rewrite the fucking first arc of your campaign. <laughs> so it may pay off to say, Hey, I'm thinking of running blah, blah, blah game. Let me know up front. If there's any like lines or veils or any other sort of, you know, si- situations I need to be aware of so that I'm not making you have a bad time when you intended to have a good time. We're all here to have fun. It's your job to make everybody have fun. Make them, make them, make them, have make fun. them have fun. <laughs> speaking of we should you should also discuss setting expectations and tone everyone will be happy 
<laughs> Force them to have a good time. I'm so bad at this. I, I I'm, tr- I'm working on it for sure. Like, like forcing the people to have a good time. No, I mean the setting expectations <laughs> and the tone. Um, I like I've, I'm working on it, and a, I guess a great example would be me coming to these con games over the weekend with I'm going to play Monster of the Week. Here is the setting that I'm running. Here's the tone. I'm only bringing certain. Like I'm only bringing certain playbooks for this, and I had to tell people no for the things that they for some of the things they wanted to play, and it felt bad. And I and I gave them an out. Like I completely understand if that if you're like oh then never mind. Like I'm no hard feelings, man. You can get up and go if you want. Um, but it's it's important to know what you want out of the game and to hold to it. Otherwise, not only will you compromise your ability to have fun running the game, but I mean other people could be on the same page as you. And now they're not having as much fun either because you've compromised what the setting expectation and the tone was going to be. Yeah. Um, one of the best things we played in a Godbound game for like a year and a half. Um, and Godbound is supposed to be this like highfalutin exalted type, like super powerful heroes beat the crap out of everything. Kind of like high action game. Yeah. Um, so anyway, uh, so we we straight up established from the beginning that like we really wanted to play a humorous game, that uh, that it wouldn't like bad things might happen, but things would would ultimately work out, uh, and that in the event of failure or even extreme failure, it would be for humor and not for like great tragedy, mm-hmm. uh, and it resulted in a very lighthearted like romp for <laughs> the entire time. Yeah. Um, and normally that sort of gets exhausting, but it was actually because we, we all went into it with the expectation that that was how the game was going to be. Right. So because we had that, that laid out ahead of time, um, we were able to not be tired out by the, by the comedy because it wasn't just, it wasn't just intentionally like a gag a minute. We, we wanted it to be lighthearted. We wanted it to be funny. Um, and like we knew that there wasn't going to be like a aggressive bait and switch. Uh, there wasn't going to be like a, a tonal thing that dragged us all down, um, because we agreed. Like, and we honored that agreement. Yeah, yeah. that's how it works. That's how it fucking works. When it works, that's how it works. Open, Open discussion. discussion for the miscellaneous stuff. I can hear yeah. you doing that. It's pounding on the table. All right. Um, for the miscellaneous stuff, for like anything else that isn't the stuff we covered, um, questions, um, dietary restrictions for snack times. Yeah, dietary restrictions for snack times. Schedules. Uh, who's paying for pizza? Mm-hmm. Um, the policy on bonus experience, not the podcast, but the extra experience you hand out. Yeah, listening to watching YouTube beforehand. And listening, listening to bonus experience bonus beforehand. Experience. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Who yeah. your favorite bonus experience character is. Mm. Yeah, it's Margaret. It's Margaret. Uh, I mean. <laughs> uh, anything else that like you need to talk about or get settled before you play. There's there's all sorts of the dumb social stuff that goes along with playing a game. Um, yeah. That, that you need to, to deal with. like Who sits um, where. Are you yeah. allergic to my cat? Mm-hmm. Do we need to Should we rotate places? Who's bringing yeah. food? Who's what bringing kind of food? Are we bringing food? Is it okay if I drink LaCroix and burp really loudly? Right. Does anyone have a problem if I drink alcohol and burp really loudly? Mm-hmm. 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 If I bring alcohol, do I have to bring alcohol for everybody else? Monica? What kind of dice does this game use? What? Do you have any tips for implementing a session zero? into Hot the tips. next campaign that our Hot players tips. may be running. Hot tips. Hot tips. Hot tips. Hot wet tips. tips. Yeah. Hot. Uh, the original outline was written at 11.37 p.m. in a haze, uh, and you really improved it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> Thank, you. Uh, Thank you. So, yeah, if you're going to implement this into your next campaign, um, I think you should enforce that your players show up to session zero. Um, we have a Henry and I have a mutual friend who is notorious for wanting to make their character I'm just gonna they them for anonymity purposes. Um, 
who they always Schrodinger's want to make their character, they them. <laughs> yeah, Schrodinger's they them. Um, they always want to make their character on their own time, and then they show up with a character that like has stacked equipment to a ridiculous degree, and it has Ugh. like huge bonuses, and uh, you know, has found a loophole. And they're not really super like win at RPGs kind of person, but like we'll just I I literally wrote the Scion tags system to be a system that this person could not exploit <laughs> so this is for you steve i don't know that's their name no i we, we do a game with the steve steve's great okay it's not um, for you steve not you not for you not for you um so y- nobody gets to make their character on their own um I, i've also been hanging out with some new people online um and have heard some horror stories about like Oh well, they showed up with this totally broken character, and I was like, "What well, did you session zero? And they were like, "No." Like, well, <laughs> you, well, you had kept an eye. Like, I apparently there are people out there who need to be babysat during character creation. Insist <laughs> on transparency, which means like, if you are house ruling the sharpshooter to only shoot a hundred yards, be straightforward about the fact that its original six hundred yard range is too much. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like if your house, if you're changing it, if you want to, you should be clear with your players why you're changing it. Even if it's just like, hey, this combination is broken, so you're not allowed to take it. That is a perfectly valid reason. Yup, you're the GM, and, man. You could yeah, also just yeah. be like, I dated a sharpshooter in college, and I hate them, so no sharpshooters. <laughs> it's like if you don't like it, find another fucking game. I'm the GM. <laughs> I, I mean, mean don't, that's uh, probably really, yeah, that's a little over the top, but. That's sort of pushing, that's sort of like the, the don't solve an out of character problem with an in character solution. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. well, Is it solving like, okay. an out of game problem with an out of game solution? <laughs> it's just a real life problem. <laughs> right. I uh, and, and don't let anybody weasel out of sharing what they've got on their sheet. Mm hmm. No one. Um, you will be nope. surprised at yeah. who is secretly a cheater. Shame. Yeah. Shame. <laughs> oh, shame. <laughs> yeah, uh, don't let anybody be a secret cheater. It was hilarious, though. Shane's a cool guy. <laughs> it was just one arrow of black dragon slang. It was Oddly just one. specific. <laughs> Anything else you want to add? Uh, mm-hmm. where can mm-hmm. they, uh, where can they find our show? You can find the show, you can find the show at bxpcast.com. I don't know what's up with this voice. Sounds like um, a pretty cool website. A pretty cool website, it's got a pretty cool banner and a cool icon. <laughs> anyway, it's part of the Misdirected Mark Network. Bing! Great. Where could they email <laughs> us, though? They could, they could shoot us an email telling us how dumb they thought this episode was. Uh... <laughs> Bonusyxpcast at gmail.com. If you're new, to if you're new to us really? and you're new to role playing, I feel like this is the perfect episode to give you an idea of what us and role playing are like. <laughs> oh, surely, surely. What about Twitter? Though uh, I, I need to be less down on myself. Um, they can they can add us on Twitter at yeah, yeah. Bonusyxpcast. The word sex is in there. The word sex is in there. Bonusyxpcast. The yep, that's correct. Are you uh, on Twitter though? I am. Um, I actually recently had a whole bunch of like threads about game design and shit because oh. there were some spicy hot takes on the internet. <laughs> Did I not think hot that? takes, hot takes, hot wet uh, takes. And I had to, I had to respond to them, and they've been some of the most popular tweets I've ever turned out, which means hey. I got like ten people to like them. Oh, em. holy shit! Holy shit! Time um, to start so- sharing your SoundCloud. Yep, mm-hmm. I don't have a SoundCloud, no, um, but no. I do have a Twitter. I am at Zena Sun. I what about am, you? Where can they find your hot takes? My hot Twitter takes are yeah. on uh, at Ray underscore Cole. That's R A I. I am uh, I am always shocked to see the egregious misspellings of my name. <laughs> I am astound- it's, it's astounding when people misspell your name when it is right in front of them. <laughs> like on our Discord. Mine is I'm the like, unname. <laughs> right? I'm like got my name wrong, right and it has more letters <laughs> and more, more and points spelled, of failure <laughs> right? and you spelled ray's name wrong my name is three letters and you got two it, of them wrong right, and it, right there right there it's right um, there 
stop recording now. Oh, wait. No, everybody get out. Oh, oh, shit. Right. Everybody get out. Fine. Uh, Max somehow got back in. <laughs> you too, Max. Come and, on, buddy. Let's go. Uh, you know, change it if you want to. Yeah. Change it if you want to. Yeah. Go stab someone. Now I'm going to stop recording. Don't do it like D&D did. <laughs>